All right, guys, here we go. Gonna do a quick flight. Uh, take off here at Aurora, KUAO. Fly on over direct to um, Salem McNary, which is KSLE. Um, gonna go through the whole checklist. I'm gonna use the one in the sim so you guys can see kind of what's going on. Uh, one non realistic thing is when they put you at the fuel pumps like this, you can't back up and I can't get out and push the plane backwards. So, uh, they, you have to drive through it, there's no way around it. Um, but here we go. Sitting in front of the fuel pumps, we can kind of look and see what we have here. Uh, I'll change this. I try to keep it realistic. Uh, I saw the medical examiner, examiner for the FAA yesterday was 195 pounds. Uh, let's figure oh. <laughs> All right, 90 pounds. For the next portion. And I think let's go with two. 80% fuel. All right. You can see that our uh, total max takeoff weight is within reason. If we were too heavy, we'd go red. Okay. Well, unfortunately, I moved to the wrong one. You know, there we go. Just under max takeoff. Oh, open up our checklist here. Go to free flight. Uh, reset the page. Sometimes there's a little thing that auto moves it down. I don't know why it's not here. Um, so aircraft documents. Can't actually check that because we can't get in the plane. But I do have my checklist. It is in my plane. So we're going to say that one is good. Got a parking brake. Make sure it's set. Although anytime time you're parked, your parking brake is set. So, not sure why it doesn't start that way. The ignition is turned off. The avionics switch is turned off. Okay, the battery switch now turned on. Let's move this up. We already know from weight and balance that we have about 15 gallons of fuel on each side. Uh, I definitely want to check that. Low fuel light it is right here, it is off. Avionic switch, when I turn this on, we're going to hear the um, cooling fan in it start going up. There it is. We're good there. Okay, turn it off, you don't feel the battery. Plus, you don't want the avionics on when you're trying to start the plane or shut the plane off, it spikes the surge of power through it. Very bad. Okay, switch is off. All right, so static pressure switch is in the normal position or off. Enunciator panel, we're gonna put that up to Test and check. Everything comes on. Let's get it there. Fuel selector down here. It is in the bulk position. Some planes are either on or off. This is the 172 is bulk. 
be able to shut off valve. is actually right next to it. There we go. Let's open flaps. It's right here. Sure, everything's working there. Okay, hit it, eat. Turn it on. That is right here. Uh, when you're in the actual plane, you would flip that on, go outside, put your hand over, hit it, eat, and make sure it's warming up. I don't know if I can zoom out that far. There it is. This little guy right here, this is the uh, pit port, and you actually, uh, in real life, you would check it, make sure nothing is blocking it, because that's what runs your airspeed indicator. So, uh, just put our hand over it, it's nice and warm, so check that off. Pit heat is off. Go ahead and go down there. See, so flip it off from inside of the cockpit here. Battery switch turned off, so we don't turn or lose all of our battery power to be able to start it. Elevator trim. It's in the neutral position. Takeoff position looks like. Good way down here. There we go. Okay, that page is done. Over here, set it. Okay, pre flight, we're done. That's what we just did. Although, in real life, you would check uh, all the stuff. You would grab your flaps and make sure that they work and your ailerons and rudder pedals. And I'm not sure why none of that is moving right now. Okay, it's moving. I just wasn't doing it outside. All right, so seat belts. Make sure you fasten your seat belts. Take off, landing, and this is such a short flight. I just leave them on. Plus, there's not a bathroom in this plane, so there's no reason to get up. Uh, take them, click them. If you ever had a car from the '60s? Same, almost same thing. You click in, pull it up, pop it out. Or if you ever ridden in a real plane. Um, this should also, uh, have like the pre-flight, uh, I don't know, pre-flight check. Can't think of what it's called. I apologize about that, but, oh, pre-flight briefing. Um, I already did some of that because we're flying over to Salem, um, brought bags in the back. If your seat's in the upright position, if you see a plane coming at us from any direction, especially in Microsoft Flight Simulator, because that does happen, and you don't think I see it, let me know. Let me know either way. Uh, when we're going down to take off, I'll be quiet. I'm watching all the gauges. Apologize for that. Uh, if you have, if you're starting to feel sick, let me know. You should with flight. There we go. All right, so we're good there. All the electrical equipment is off. Okay, everything is off. Avionics is off. That's right here. Fuel selector is in the full position. The fuel shutoff valve is should be open. Yep, it is in the open position. If the plane doesn't start, it's immediately closed. Okay. Starting the, the engine. Our throttle. Go ahead and move it. Uh, about a quarter inch or so. Yeah. So, that'll cut off the that. Okay, there. Alright. Clear prop. 
in the plane. We would look out. There is nobody around us. Uh, look both ways. You don't want anybody near that prop. Uh, good there. Battery switch is on. Beacon switch is on. Make sure set to rich. Put it down here so you can watch the move. Okay. Okay, auxiliary fuel pump is there. And actually, I'll move this. And, uh, you guys watch right here. When I click that on, um, it, it's going to pop up because it's slowing the fuel. Wait a second. Just two hands here. Okay, one, two, three. Alright, there we go. That just puts fuel into it. Uh, we're going to lean this out. Okay, my feet are on the rudder pedals. See there. Alright, it's ignition. And once the engine starts, uh, push in the mixture, fires up. Okay. Yell one more time, clear prop. Okay, so this should actually part should be on this page because you're supposed to check this as soon within 30 seconds of the plane starting. So I think that should be on the other one. But oil pressure is going up. We are good. So safe to run the plane. The throttle, you want it at 8,000 RPM, which is pretty much there. It, when you get good at adjusting the motor throttle, uh, you can, it'll, it'll just start up and that's what it is. My throttles are super touchy. I'm going to go with that. About a thousand fifty. So, oil pressure. The first thing to check, we check that. Alternator, let's turn the alternator on and see the end gauge drop down because it's actually charging eventually to be up to zero. That just shows the load that's on things. Alright. The alternator indicator light is off. I'll uh, flip off the EP. Means we're not charging. We are charging. Okay. The ammeter. Is down because it's starting to charge up the battery that we just used. Okay, avionic switch is now on. Okay, you see the radio is over here turned on. So let's do this guy here. Why on standby? It'll start working its way up. Okay, our flaps are down. This flaps all the way up. For takeoff, one more flaps right around 15. That looks like right around 30. Huh. Didn't realize it actually skipped over that. Alright. So, so there. Heading indicator. That heading indicator. This here. Make it a bolt in the same page. Or the same page is turned over there. So, if you notice, we are uh, on the north side of 330 degrees. We are on the north side of 330 degrees, so we're good there. If that value is off, this guy here, you would actually push in and turn it, and it engages a uh, 
a gear in there and it spins it around. You don't have to push in the sound there. The altimeter. Now, the altimeter can't set until we've checked our weather. So we will come back to that. And the attitude indicator is right there. Alright. So this is to get out the taxi, but what we're going to do first is I have um, I can show you right here. I have Four Flight running. Four Flight is this amazing app that uh, mainly used for in real life flying. Also has that's it'll work in your simulator. Microsoft Flight Simulator, you need a program called uh, Foxtrot to Foxtrot Foxtrot, which is Flight Simulator. Sorry, Foxtrot Sierra to Foxtrot Foxtrot Flight Simulator to Four Flight. Click Connect. Uh, when you do that, when you load up in the plane, uh, it shows me that I am at Aurora Airport, KDYO. Once you start moving, it'll actually show a plane image and then you can actually follow along on your iPhone or iPad if you have it. So, what I do with Core Flight is if you look, it is VFR conditions. It's what it, by its green it says VFR. It was red only there. And we would have to file IFR and if you're not IFR rating, do that. So I click weather and I'll show this real quick. But on the ATIS, it's 118.525. You'll see oh, it's actually coming through good enough on the camera, but you'll see this is on ATIS 118.525. Oh, there. I have one of my switches in the cockpit set up to see bring it up. Sorry, I was putting it where I can see it on my own screen. Uh, just the same as turning that, I can turn it off and go, you know, go down. It's actually better to have that tactical feel of the knob uh, if you actually want to or eventually someday fly in the light. So, the only issue is it's not mapped perfectly, so sometimes you gotta skip your number, sometimes it works. And let's go back here, right like that. Let's go down a few. Uh, oh, not want to go there, so we'll go ahead and on the screen. Now we're coming up.
All right, so my scratching is a little hard to read in real life. You want to make this uh, really clear because you need to actually write this all down. But uh, on four flight, there's a scratch pad, and that scratch pad. Let me turn that up for a second. That scratch pad uh, allows me to write down everything they're saying, and I try not to look at the screen pops it up on the screen because in real life you don't have a screen you have to just write it down. The nice thing is you can listen to that and in reality as many times as it takes you to write it all down. Uh, eventually you'll get really good at it you won't have to worry about it. So uh, 3021 that's our altimeter so we will go here and we will adjust this to 3021 I haven't built the altimeter yet. Um, I don't think I can do it just with my laser. I'm going to need a 3D printer, so I got to wait on that. Uh, if you got to make three different gears that hook to the shafts for the different needles. Um, I, you know, I could probably almost do it and just not have the three shafts, although the don't want to do that because that's not uh, that's not correct to the airplane. But I usually don't go about ten thousand feet, which is where the next one goes. And then um, when you get up to twenty thousand feet, you gotta go. So all right, we have that. So write the checklist out again. So, we still learning all the lights you need. I personally just turned them all on and did it keep. So, um, let's go ahead and get this guy going. Landing light is on, strobe light is on. That's kind of Strobe light is on, navigation light is on. I'm not going to release the parking brake yet because I want to get my view up and right. Uh, well, I guess I can do. Oh, I'm in front of the gas pump, but I don't want to do that yet. But I will test that before we go. The rudders we already tested. They're working. Current coordinator. Uh, you can check as we start moving. Heading indicator, we will. This guy here will also check that as we start rolling. Um, compass as well. Okay. So, we will get clearance and taxi out. the rest up there. So in real life Aurora Tower has a tower so you can actually contact Aurora Ground or the ground. Um, so also on the fourth flight app I know it says it right there but I click on the UAO for um, information and go to clearance it's 119.15 they have that as Portland Brown. So, don't be wrong, but. Zero. Here we go. So, we are here. So, we would say um, Aurora Ground. Cessna 67446 is at fuel pumps ready to taxi to runway 17 with uniform. And so
what I should have said using Taxiway Alpha. So uh, Taxi and Hold Short of Runaway 1, 7, using Taxiway Alpha, Cessna 446. The reason I'm saying it uh, is I want the practice so when I start actually flying, I have to practice to do it. Uh, and if you don't click it, uh, they'll start going. So, alright, close that. Um, fortunately, the gas pumps are in our way, I can't back up. So, on four flight, if, I don't know, I really hope you can see this on here, but um, I have a little dot, I wonder how big I can make my dot. So, right there, it's not really coming in. It's right in that area. Um, the little blue blinking dots going to turn to a plane here soon. But you can use four flight to get you around. Now uh, we're literally just going to uh, head west, get it onto Taxiway Alpha because it's right there, and then uh, head north to get up to the runoff area, Taxiway 17. So. Got my feet on the brakes. Brakes off. Parking brakes off. Get a little bit of power there. Try to get turned around. Great. Well, now we're right behind with this, so. Alright. So we test our brakes. Brakes are working. I like to keep right about a thousand RPM because the same way I'm just like moving. You can see off to the right there, number 17, and tells us that's where race 17 is, and that is where we're heading. So, with the few clouds that it said at 600 feet, what that means is that we are not allowed to uh, go through clouds. So, we have to make sure that we are uh, below 10,000 feet, which will be, we have to make sure that we are uh, three miles visibility and uh, 2,000 feet uh, horizontally away from a cloud, you know, front behind us, and 1,000 feet above us and below us uh, from a cloud because the IFR pilots can actually fly in those clouds and we don't want to be hit. Alright, so I am in the runoff area. We just set my parking brake, as you know, this plane is moving. Uh, please make sure that your seats are in the most upright position. You know, we already went over that, but uh, there we go. Uh, Seatbelts are locked, showed you how to use them. Flight controls, they are free and correct. One, two, three. All right. We set all of our flight instruments. We uh, checked our fuel. We still have 15 gallons on each side. Funny enough, we are in the rich on our mixture, which is the red. Uh, lean is out like that, and rich is all the way in. Fuel selector still on hold. Uh, autopilots. It's not letting me go up to it. Okay, autopilot is on. Uh, take this guy off. I'm not sure why that yoke isn't moving. You can, you can hear the elevator on moving on the outside. So, yes, it's moving against it. 
Auto pilot off. There we go. Throttle running up to 8800. This you can see So, you're moving your back wheels. You want to go all the way to the left, right? And while you drop down, and you make no, you don't, you don't want less than 150 foot to the right one. Uh, they have to be within 50, they're the same. So, we are back to full. Vacuum bin is here. We are in the green here. No oil pressure is in the green here. No oil temperature is at 200. It's in the green here. Over there. The M meter is, you know, up towards zero. We are good there. The nunciator panel. I'll have to learn how to say that. There is nothing on there. You're good to go. I don't. Pull it back, try to go all the way down. I want to make sure the plane does not die. We are good. It's right in that 650 to 700 RPM range. Good. Now, you don't want to leave it down there that very long because uh, it, it will follow the spark plugs in real life. And actually, when you're just sitting and waiting, um, you want to lean out the mixture over here. You can see I pulled it back a little bit. You got too much and kill the plane. But I want to get leaned out a little bit there. Okay, so what we can do uh, that so 11915 is the contact tower when we get up there. So what I want to do is four play A to A O to A O F A L S E. Take it there direct. Kilo Sierra Lima Echo, 23 miles, not uh, a thousand, that's seems right. So now I'm going to go down over here. Start still for me. There we go. And hopefully, you guys can kind of see my phone from there. If not, I will work on getting. Uh, the camera set up to so show my phone. But if I click on uh, KSLE, the VFR is good. Uh, there it is, is 1.455. So 1.455. That will be our next frequency. And we'll check that as soon as we get here. It's only a 20 minute flight. Do you want that uh, track? Do you want that weather? Know, about 20, 20 miles out, uh, and we're 23 miles, 22.9 miles. So uh, then the next one that we'll want is uh, 119 one. And actually, the better way to do this, I don't have this set up because uh, Flight Simulator 2020 has have this set up very well. Then. But, um, oh, also, as I change 
they have all of the comms put together. Even though that's not good enough, so. Down to one twenty four uh, five fifty. I do want to build a radio panel at least so I have all the knobs. I had that on my other sim, so I'm sure it will change. Okay, so. Then our Salem Tower is going to be uh, 119, 110. Huh. Grabbing the wrong switch. As you see up there, we're changing that up there. Under the top of the GMS 930, 119, 119, 1. All right. So what we will do is once we get up in the air, we need to set this not to stand by, but it's going to be, sorry about that, to altitude, because it's recording our altitude. And up here, we'll click comp 2, and in theory, In theory, when we get in range, uh, I might have to repeat range. Okay, once we get into range, the radio here. Should uh, go ahead and start the same. And then all we have to do is after we have the weather, uh, then we can contact Salem Tower and they will uh, just clear the land. Alright, so radios are set, avionics. Avionics are set. Uh, we're VFR, so we don't need that. Transponder is on altitude. Autopilot is off. Elevator set for takeoff flaps. Yeah, let's just double check that because I did that. Yeah. Why did we die? are close to 10 degrees. In the real plane you can actually get it perfectly right, but my uh, little well, switch is not getting that point. Windows are closed and locked. Okay, we are on the brakes. We are off there. We are good to go. Okay. Let's start where it needs to be. Try to leave this where I can see my altimeter. Pull the keyboard down. There we go. So now what we do is work our way up to the line. short thing, old short line, I'm sure I've been over this before, but uh, think about it like driving a car. Anytime there is a solid line crossing you, do not cross it without permission. When you're on this side of the line coming through because it's dotted, you can go through to get out of the way of the runway. So now that we're here, old short line, uh, we're gonna request takeoff clearance. So uh, it would be uh, Aurora Tower, I Cessna Skyhawk 
67446 is at pulling short runway 173 to to the south. Cessna 446. Take off runway one seven south departure is this not four four six? All right, here we go. So, in real life, even if things you here to go, just make sure nobody is coming in. There could have been an emergency, they might not have uh, the radio dropped, you can't contact ground or power. Don't want to get hit. Four flight tells you I had the volume down, but it is now up. It tells you when you are approaching a runway, it tells you when you cross into the runway, and then it tells you how much runway is remaining. It will also um, it'll pop up with the ATIS at near, nearby airports when we come up to it. Um, and, you know, then we can click and get all that info, but well, we already know that set. So, all right, start pulling up power, 1800, we are good, release the brakes, a little bit of right rudder, get that power all the way in. All right, start to put that center line. Um, there we go, speed's alive. We are at 40, 50, 55 knots, we broke it at 55 knots in this plane. We are up, up to it. There we go. We are not ready for that. Uh, at the 
even thousands, so two thousand, four thousand, six thousand, eight thousand, plus five hundred. The reason for that is that's the FR Airways and or IFR Airways. Uh, they are at the uh, going west. They're at the uh, evens uh, with just even and not the five hundred. So they're at two thousand. 4,000, If you're heading on the west, then, or sorry, if you're heading east, then you want to be on the odds. They're going to come back as soon as we have to listen to that. Frequency change of through system 446. I'd have to listen to that again.
Salem Tower, Cessna, Titan Cessna, Skyhawk, 67446, a few miles north of the Romeo. Off to our left, and we 
looks like there possibly to be a road that as we're going, it should look like we're going right forward to the bottom of that road. You can see some water here, so close. Pop up and let us know uh, that we're pretty good. Right? It happens in the, the downwind. So, on the AS report, it said VFR, not uh, say direction of flight. So, that's why we said that we were one, two miles uh, more. Uh, Sorry, of course, for the airport, we don't have to say what like we're on because we just have an airport and they are tracking our plane right now. Okay, there we go. 
Somewhere around 70. There we go, 500 feet above the ground level. Short final runway 34. Final. I'm pulling all the power out there. It's going too fast. Oh, wait. We're down 3 1, aren't we? Yeah, rolling around. Yeah. 
normally at this point we go around and move too high, but in the front way right here. farm over here. I don't have enough time to really, really get myself going. The black knot is perfectly fine. There's a farm.
And now we're sitting here, we're on the way. Uh, my swap button is set to both of them for some reason. Uh, it, it switches both of them, so I just I just changed the frequency of COM two there. Set on ground system four four six. Request taxi. You're parking. Taxi general admission parking via Dexaway Bravo, Cross Runway 31, uh, using uh, Cross Runway 31 is via Charlie, Cross Runway 34. So now what I do real quick. Come 
want to go the Bravo cross runway one. Charlie. So it doesn't look like it can actually get to Charlie. That's me. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, uh down here. Cross runway 31. Go down to Charlie. Cross uh, runway 34 to Charlie. Yeah, let's say that. So, okay. So that's a little off because I can't cross. I can't. Uh, after I cross runway 31, I'm actually on an abandoned runway. That's not Charlie. That should be sales. I think that means that that's actually it's not very anymore. But we'll go ahead and use it. Go to scale. And then go to Charlie and then general aviation parking. And be right there. So I'm hoping we can really make that out, but not really. Kind of. So hopefully we can do that. We can go down the Bravo, press runway 3 1. Uh, uh, and then go down across the runway 34 and then go to General Aviation Park. Actually closed. Oh, wow. Salem and Perry still without power from our big ice storm that we had about a week ago. There's still a lot of people without power. So, technically, in real life, none of these lights are working. I kind of wish that the, uh, the sim would actually follow uh, what's called the them, if I notice the airmen, uh, I wish you would follow that. All right, we are We're traveling down Pepsi Way Bravo, and shooting down here, a little ways, and you kind of already see the lights are starting to uh, widen out. We're gonna take a right, and uh, they told us to cross the runway in real life, but there's a chance that it would tell us a little short. Um, there's obviously no traffic here. So, yeah. In fact, there's no traffic here. Say you don't have any traffic coming in. So, we cross it. If they don't tell you to cross runway, um, blah blah, like if it said use taxiway Bravo, uh, then you would hold short of the runway. So oh, here we go, this is where we can uh, return. We can see as we're coming up, there's no planes there, it's coming. So if they didn't give us clearance to cross the runway, uh, we'll stop right there in the little short line. Uh, and we're like, approaching one way three one. We got one more look, make sure nobody's coming. 
Runway, do not cross the runway. Approaching runway three four. Turn over the spelling. Okay. Enter runway three four. Five thousand feet remaining. Yep. Cross here. There's the uh, whole short line for runway 3 4. It's a line because it's dashed on our side where we're allowed to cross it. Thank you. 
go. We made it. Sailed the ferry. Uh, looks like it took an hour and 13 minutes to do a 20 minute flight. Because of all the go rails and whatnot. Alright, so we can shut all of our lights down and keep our beacon light. Remember, no matter what, you want to shut down your avionics. So, uh, radio's off. Kill the alternator. And pull it out to get. Uh, I always pick this, pull it shut down the whole plane. See what we're doing here. Okay. One of the things I did that uh, I didn't say when we were taxiing back, I was lifting the flaps up. These should turn off with the lights. They don't. So there we go. Guys are off. Let's see. And then one second here. This red guy should pop. There we go. That's our fuel shut off. Now we can shut down the beacon light. Mm. And the little power is off. Um, I'm going to just show one more thing real quick. Do it. I might have to turn it back on. Um, it was actually doing it, I don't know why, but uh, it was, um, it shows you what they call breadcrumbs and it shows you where you're flown. I wonder if it does. Oh, it's because uh, they upgraded me to the uh, uh, Pro um, for a trial at Four Flight, and this is really cool. Uh, showing up here, and I'll show it down there. It gives a whole track log. It shows all of our uh, going around traffic patterns. So. Yeah, that blue line in there is all the traffic patterns. So it gives us all the information of where we flew, how high, uh, tells us our pitch and our tank, our speed, our altitude. And then you can actually, um, you can actually uh, play the whole flight all over again if you want to watch and see how things went. Pretty cool. I'm not going to apply those to the logbook uh, because I'm also going to use four flight when I actually uh, go get my private pilot's license, and I don't want my simulator uh, times to be in there. So, all right, there you guys go. That was uh, our flight. It's a long one. Showed you some things to do, some things to know. But hey, if you enjoyed it and you want to check out a different area you want to fly in, let me know. Uh, we can go anywhere. Um, one other thing is we'll go ahead and tell us to go back to the main menu. That's where you get to pick the planes. So I'm willing to jump into a different plane if you want. I don't fly the big airliners. Um, we could 
not going to turn out well. Most likely we'll crash, but um, we we can do this. What we just flew, flew was a Cessna Skyhawk 172. We could do its baby brother, the 150, 152. And that's what our actual uh, flight simulator is made out of. Um, here we go. Let's click in here and I can kind of show you the different planes. Um, this is the G1000, so none of my gauges will be the same. They're the big uh, screens. They're essentially bigger than an iPad, and there's two or three of them in there. Um, let's see. Let's see. This way, a Beechcraft Baron uh, that also uses the G1000 screens. The cool thing about this plane, dual props, and it also has uh, retractable gear, so you pull the gear up, you can fly that. Uh, the King Air, it holds like 13 people, you can try that one. I haven't really tried any of these guys. These are the small little aircrafts. Um, Icon A5. So, yeah. Uh, Diamond DA62s. Uh, the TVMs are really cool planes. Sirius SR22. That is one of the planes that I will own in real life eventually. Um, they're pretty fun. You gotta have a special endorsement to fly them because instead of it being a whole yoke, it's they call it fly by wire and it's just on the side and that's how you fly it. Then you get into the big ones. Uh, could try this little guy, it'd be fun. So, yeah. Just let me know in the comments if you want to uh, try to fly. Do you want to see what it's like to be in one of those different planes? Um, this is uh, an open cockpit plane, both of these, those are kind of cool. So, And also, we can go anywhere in the world, literally, that you want to go. We can zoom out on this map. Here's our world. And, uh, you know, let me zoom in here. Go check out Taj Mahal. Uh, the different areas around here. Let's go way in, get to the little airports if you want. So, yeah, let me know in the comments what you want to do. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe, hit the like button on it. Uh, it's the only way I'll know what content you guys want to see is when you're liking the videos or you're commenting and letting me know. So, uh, hope to, hope you guys like this video and remember, and safely.